if you're anything like me, you stayed up all night, New Year's Eve, not to watch the ball drop, not to kiss your New Year's Day, whatever. It was because you wanted to watch The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, Chapter 4. I've been waiting all year for this. They did us dirty already and said this was going to be the last season, even though they were planning another one, whatever. I don't know. Here we are. The last season of Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. And what did we get? Trash. That's what we got. We got trash. Y'all cannot convince me otherwise that we got anything other than trash. I'm sorry. And that's what this video is about. Sabrina, the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina had the potential to go anywhere, to do anything, all right? We all know Sabrina the Teenage Witch. We know and love her. We love her. Melissa Joan Hart, she's amazing. She did great. All right, even the animated series. Let me look this up right now. I was gonna look this up before, but let me see. Even Sabrina the Animated Series, they had, where did I see this? 65 episodes, okay? We get four seasons of this trash, of the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, and it could have been, it could have been, it could have been everything. So here I am making this video in hopes that other people feel as passionate about this letdown as I do. And we're gonna break this video up into a few parts, okay? First, we're gonna talk about the elder, ter eldritch terrors, whatever. Y'all know what I'm talking about, the terrors. The eldritch terrors, the elder terrors, the TTs, the tutus, the tatas, whatever. <laughs> I'm, I'm done, okay? Because how are we going to go from season three was all about the world ending, right? And like Sabrina had to save the world and save it from these pagans or whatever, you know, that whole mess. So we're going to go from that extreme apocalypse to yet another extreme apocalypse, apocalypse this season. You know, here come these terrors. They're going to absolutely destroy the world as we know it. So, oh, they got to save the world again i get it you're a witch you got powers whatever but do you constantly need to be saving the world are you the best person for this job you mean to tell me that there's nobody else in greendale riverdale dale dimadome dimadang whatever there's nobody else in this planet that's more suitable to save the world than a teenage witch whatever even if i give you that Okay, let's talk about the terrors. I may be remembering this wrong, but I'm pretty positive that Faustus Blackwood said there were eight terrors, right? Eight. And out of those eight terrors, how many do we actually see? I counted seven. So we start the season talking about, oh, there's, there's eight elder terrors. We gotta watch out for eight. There never actually was eight. Can you believe it? Believe you me that there were not. Okay, so I looked up this. So I found this article that's talking about the Eldritch Terrors. Number one being the dark, we saw the dark. Number two being the uninvited. Y'all, can I just say about the uninvited really quick? That actually really broke my heart and I don't think he deserved that to be stuck and trapped inside that house when they tricked him and all he wanted was love. That is all, all he wanted was love. Anyways, number three, the weird. We all know the weird, whatever. That was a weird, weird episode. Number four, the perverse. Number five was the cosmic, supposedly. The cosmic. Keep that in mind. Number six was the returned. We saw the returned, whatever. The endless and the void. I may be wrong thinking that we didn't see all eight of them, but... I can recall they said that the Eldritch Terrors are leading up to the Void. Maybe I heard that wrong. So I thought the Void was not technically an Eldritch Terror. I thought that was something completely on its own. But whatever. Push that aside. Say I got it wrong and uh, the Void is an Eldritch Terror, which means that there's eight. But the Cosmic, we never really saw the Cosmic. It says here in this uh, article... 
In episode five, an angel arrives in the mortal realm to warm everyone of a catastrophic kalupapapa that will soon happen between Earth, Heaven, and Hell. Why? It's because there are now two Sabrinas and it's causing too much chaos. Okay, so we're going to say that's an Eldritch Terror because I'm pretty sure there were two Sabrinas before Faustus. Well, I don't know why I choose to say his first name. Before Blackwood got involved. So is it, should we say that Sabrina caused her own Eldritch Terror that was not summoned by Blackwood? I don't know. There's just, you know, there's a hole in the story there and I'm not here for it. Now, okay, this is, this is the one I really wanted to focus on was the Endless. Okay, so if you remember that episode where, you know, the best episode where they combined um, old school Sabrina with the new school and we had, you know, Zelda and Hilda and it was cute. But in that, okay, so Salem, the animated cat, is supposed to be the Endless. So, again, aren't the um, Eldritch Terror supposed to be, like, all-powerful beings? Like, so freaking powerful, whatever. So, you know, they, she has that chit-chat with the Endless Salem and is like, yo, you know, if we stay here, we're going to get scooped up by the Void. And he's like, okay, well, we got to get out of here. So they're running out there and they go through that mirror, right? And he's dead? Again, all powerful being they go through a mirror and even like i get it they're teleporting through a mirror cool even if they go to the other side and get scratched up with glass isn't he still a huge cosmic being like don't you think a little bit of glass isn't gonna hurt anybody and they never mention it again it doesn't it doesn't stand out y'all they they talk if you really listen to the dialogue and what they say about the terrors and what's actually done it just doesn't match up okay doesn't. It's not very good storytelling if you ask me. Let's move on to Katikorito. We're just going to talk about the fact that, like I said, the entire series is supposed to be um, done within a year. Excuse me? Excuse me? Everything that happened, you know, the, <laughs> the it, dark baptism, you know, the fallout with Satan, they became the church of Hecate or whatever. They had the whole pagan situation where nearly everybody died. What well, actually everybody did die. And then somehow they reversed time. What else happened? There was so much that happened. Oh, Nick, Nick becoming whatever, a flesh Acheron. Oh no, I'm possessed. Okay. <laughs> so we're led to believe um, on the last episode of the series, when they're celebrating Sabrina's birthday, she's turning 17. How long have you been 17? So you mean to tell me that it's only been a year for her to go through all that. And if that's true, then when was summer break? They were in school the whole time during the series. Did they ever have a break? Not that I know of. I think that's what the series was really missing, was a good beach episode. Like every anime... You need a good beach episode just to take a step back and have fun with the characters, you know? Give me a season where they all go on vacation, you know? Like go, they go out to the beach. They go to Santa Monica Pier. They have a good time. You know, they find a missing person. I don't know. <laughs> just something else. Damn. There's so many avenues that you could have taken for this series. And what did they choose? Which leads me to my third category, the story. <laughs> I don't know what to say here. I'm not, I don't write TV shows. I'm not a producer or whatever. I'm a fan. And I know that this fan was heavily disappointed in what happened in this show, in the like first episode, they're talking about Hecate and they're like, oh, we're gonna do a like festival or something and who represents what? And so she's like, I'm gonna be the crown. And then Hilda's gonna be the whatever, uh, the mother. And then, you know, they're like choosing who's gonna be the maiden. Like Sabrina's obviously excited and they're like, mm, prudence. And then Sabrina gets sad. But never again was that mentioned. 
<laughs> was it mentioned again? Was there ever a festival? Did they ever do anything or whatever? No. You know what they did instead? We get it, Ross Lynch, you're in a band. It was at this moment, um, I was watching with my boyfriend, and when the band came on, he said, I gotta go. It's, did this become Glee at some point? I know that, um, you know, we can't forget. We can't, we can't forget season two um, when they did a, when they did that. And I should have known at that moment that the show was going downhill, but I was still too far in. I really loved it. So I was like, I'm gonna see how this goes. But this season, it became glee, y'all. There was, you know, a lot of singing. For what? Again, of all the things that you could focus on in this show, you're gonna focus on all these absolute apocalyptic terrors, and you're gonna focus on the band. They could have explored, um, when Sabrina's dad comes back to life and she's like, oh my God, my dad, you know, again, that was another story that was just dropped like in season one, they were, or even season two, they're like, oh no, what happened? The mystery behind the Spellman's like airplane crash, did they ever solve it? I could be wrong, maybe they did, but I don't remember that at all. Yeah, you know, they can't, they're just going in and out the entire series between, you know, what, 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 what. Ooh. Well, Roz and Harvey making out leads me to my fourth category, Harvey and Sabrina. I don't care what you say, Harvey and Sabrina were meant to be together. Roz dating Harvey, they're dating in real life, which is cute. That's great. Good for you guys. But on my show, you're supposed to be with a Sabrina. Look how cute she is. She's just adorable. How can you not be with her? And yeah, she was a witch. But we find out in this episode that Roz is a witch too. And Harvey's like, mm, okay. <laughs> Typical man right there. Am I right, ladies? As a Sabrina fan, this was the biggest slap in the face to us. All right? And I know, you know, I may be old. I may be old. That's all. <laughs> I I know that there's probably younger fans that watch this that didn't grow up with the Sabrina that like I did. Um, and that's great, but you need to start them off right and let them know that Harvey and Sabrina are in fact in game. And the fact that Nick even said that was strange. I don't know why that's a thing in TV shows now. I feel like I've heard that been said before. Oh, we're in game. If someone had told me, someone I was dating told me, oh, we're in game, I would say nothing. And I would walk out the door because I think that's really weird. So again, let me remind you that I said <laughs> this whole thing happens within a year. Okay, so that time where she met Nick, it's like maybe a couple months, right? They were dating for maybe a couple months, we'll say. And then he got trapped by Satan. Then they go and rescue him. That probably took another month, maybe, I don't know. Well, even if I give her the benefit of the doubt and say they were dating for six months, and then he gets trapped, whatever, they get him out. When they got him out, he was not a nice dude. Uh-uh-uh, he was not nice. He was horrible to her. And that was the whole thing about season three, right? They were like, oh, Nick is eh. Like, he's not the one for me, and then, there was all that thing with Harvey in season three that was giving me life. It was giving me hope. You must not truly love her. That's bullshit! Aphrodite would only accept your heart's true desire. That must not be Rosalind. Must be something else or someone else. And then she had to write that candle where she wouldn't have feelings for Nick or Harvey anymore. So when we arrive to season four and Nick is like, Baby, I want you back. You're amazing. Your end game. Your end game, Sabrina. Your end game. And she's like, hmm, maybe he's right. I'm pretty positive at the beginning of this season, uh, Sabrina was like, you know what? I'm going to focus on me. I'm not listening to any boys. I'm going to focus on me. Well, that lasted about 
a day. I do, however, fully support Queen of Hell, Sabrina, uh, Marion Caliban. Cute. I love it. Fantastic. But Nick, why did they do that? Why in season three did they lead you to believe that, you know, she's still having feelings for Harvey, which she should, because she is Sabrina Spellman and he is Harvey Kingle. They go together. So forget everything that happened in every other past season, I guess, right? Because we're just making up a completely new show. <gasps> oh my God, that's scary. Oh, hi puppies. Nick is not her boyfriend. Harvey Kinkle is her husband. So as I've been talking, I've realized that there is another category that is bigger than Harvey and Sabrina. And it is the fact that they killed her. So you mean to tell me that everything that she's gone on in her entire life, she's died. Everybody around her has died and come back to life with many magical ways. I'm pretty sure she died at one point. At one point, wasn't she like possessed? I offer you a chance to survive the night. So all of that. And she's just gonna die right here on a sacrificial table. I don't buy it. I don't buy it one bit. Because how can you end your series with the main character dying? How? The whole thing just felt very wrong. It doesn't make any sense why you would kill off the girl that this is the whole show is about. And she's endured so much. She's overcome, she's overcome so much and we're just led to believe that she's dead. And then the fact that Nick kills himself to be with her in the end, I'm like, he didn't care about her at all. Was, wasn't there a thing like at the beginning, how like the only reason why he hung out with Sabrina was because Satan told him to anyways. So why, why is that her end? I would have much preferred if it wasn't gonna be Harvey, at least make it that like, you know, you know voodoo mush guy that she was making in the bathtub. I would have preferred that because at least it wasn't Nick. The only other choice for Sabrina, well, there, there's no other choices for Sabrina. It always has to be Harvey. This, this just does not sit right with me. And when Sabrina dies, you know, why is she just sitting there in this, in this room just chilling? You know, what about her mom and her dad? Could she finally be reunited with them? You know, other people have died in this series. What about Dorcas? Dorcas didn't come down and say, hey, you know, and if in true Sabrina fashion, I feel like she would have been finding a way out of it. You know what I mean? Like, we're just supposed to accept that she's dead and she's cool with it. Because now her and Nick are up in not heaven because God doesn't exist in this series, I guess. They're up in whatever and they're just chilling. And they're just going to be chilling forever. Oh, in game. Stupid. I really think I've recorded way too much because I'm just mad, you guys. Please, please, please comment below. Tell me what made you mad. What upset you? Let's talk it out. And if you were perfectly okay with this season, that's great too. I'm glad that you were able to put this season to rest and you're good with it. Me, on the other hand, I... I'm not putting it through. I have to put it. I have to just da ba be di da 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 ba ba da da I'll tell you what I gotta do. I gotta turn off this freaking camera because I'm sitting here. And I'm going insane. All I've been doing for the past like 48 hours is thinking and talking about Sabrina and watching it and whatever. So I'm gonna go play with my my dog. Here's one of them. And see you next time. XOXO. Thanks for watching. Again, let me know. Let me know. Just call me.